Now that we've looked at options for editing inside of a music track, chopping it up into little bite-sized pieces, now we'll look at options for editing two different music tracks together. Let me take these clips and delete them from the timeline and bring in the pristine music files that we first worked with before we chopped them up. There's the first one, there's the second one. I'm going to move the second one over and mute the first one. And we're going to try our system for determining tempo. Let's get a little practice on that. On the second piece, something happens there around the fifth bar, I think. That sounds like the beginning of a new phrase. I'm going to cut right there and just listen to this again in loop playback. It's not a very clean edit, but it does groove. At least the tempo is consistent. Practicing our system, we need to change the tempo so that bar three shows up where this music ends. And right now it's too slow. Bar three needs to be there sooner, so we move, 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 move. That looks about right. Let's zoom in and see. Bar three is here. Let's just type in bar three and have it be accurate. Bar three's little line is right where I want the piece to be. It's just a little bit one side of the beat. Maybe I made my edit slightly off, but I think we're good. Let's try. I don't think we've looked at this yet. I'm going to select these pieces and edit and heal separation. This will undo the command E that I did earlier and put them all back together. Now it only works when you've command E'd it. Like in other words, if you've edited it and moved it around, you can't heal the separation. That will just undo a command E. All right, so now I'm at 123. If I switch to bar five, if I switch to bar seven, I'm hitting a downbeat every time. I like bar nine. Let's try and make that into something. So I'm going to go to grid mode. I'm going to switch to one bar bread slices following my analogy from before, make a one bar piece there, switch to shuffle, hold down the option key and drag it over so that it still exists back here, but now I've made a clone of it here in shuffle mode. Let's command D that a couple of times. Let's do four like we did before. So now we've edited this music track. Let's say that we like that part. We're going to Command A, select them all. In the Edit menu, we're going to consolidate them. Remember, that's our digital mix down, glue these pieces together command. All right, now we're going to unmute the top guy and trim off this little unneeded piece at the end. And let's make this piece, the second piece, start as this first piece is ending. This first piece is right now not very long, but let's say it was a couple of minutes long. Process is the same here. We're going to start the second piece toward the end of the first piece, no matter how long that first piece is. Now in shuffle mode, I can't move the green one. I can't move the second one. I have to switch to slip to be able to move it. Now I could start right there, right where that music ends. I don't want to leave a gap. I don't want to start there. That's bad. And I don't really want to cut it off. So let's try what we call a splice. Now I could just bring it up here and actually start it right when the other music ends. But tracks are free in Pro Tools and there might be a volume adjustment I wanna do that's easier with a fader than with the clip gain. So there's no point in not having the extra track. Let's see how this works. I believe that I've left a little gap here. This is probably a good spot for nudge. I'm zooming in here. There is still some unused music here, and I'm using the end of the region and not the end of the 
waveforms, and that's why I'm off a little bit, and that's why this gap exists. So it should be better now. It still wants to come up just a smidgen. That's probably better. We could start it right there, start it where that ends. There's another option we hear a lot in music, and that's crossfading. To do that, we want to start this guy somewhere down in here. Where does this start? Well, where this starts depends a lot on what this is and what this is. In other words, the texture, the rhythm, the pace of this first piece combine with all that for the second piece. So sometimes you just have to put them both together and see what you get. I want this fade to be over the last four beats of this. So there's one beat, two beats, three beats, four beats. And then I don't really have distinct beats here, but I'll just make it as long as the other guy. Let's see what we get. Well, it's not bad. There are lots of options here. Let's make the fade be a little shorter on both ends. Try that. The system that you use and where you place your fades and where you start the second piece of music is very much going to depend on what your first piece is and what your second piece is. And there's going to be some experimentation here, but that's the technique. Let's say we're done with this. We like this particular edit. Is this one where we consolidate or where we bounce? If I consolidate, I get this. I do get the fade, and this starts where it's supposed to. But I still get two tracks, and that's not what I want. I want one consistent end-to-end -end piece of music. So let me undo that. And this is a case where we would want to bounce. File, bounce to, disk. Remember, a bounce is as long as you tell it to be and will contain anything that you hear. So if I did actually bounce this right now, my little drum loop down here that I used for tempo verification earlier would not be in the bounce. So we've been using fades in Pro Tools, and in the next movie, we'll take a look at some options for how to set fades.